Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about the MIU axiomatic system. MIU was a system developed by famed cognitive scientist Douglas Hofstetter to introduce students to the nature of proof. Before talking about MIU, let's first talk about the objective, which is proof. In MIU, we're going to try to show that a conditional, particular conditional statement, if P, then Q is true. So our objective is to show that the conditional statement P implies Q is true. To do so, we're going to start off with an assumption. We're going to assume that the hypothesis P is true. Assuming P is true, we maybe can make some deduction that R is true. If R is true, we can deduce maybe that S is true. If S is true, we can deduce that T is true, which implies, 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 implies. Finally, we're going to deduce that Q is true. So, assuming that P is true, P is true implies R is true, which implies S is true, which implies T is true, which implies, 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 implies Q is true. That process of P implies R, implies S, implies T, that process is called a syllogism. Let's connect that back to our table now, our conditional table. We've assumed that P is true. We used a series of deductions to show that implies that Q must be true. So, we have a true hypothesis. It implies we have a true conclusion. True hypothesis, true conclusion. So the overall conditional statement, P implies Q, must be true. That process of assuming a hypothesis is true, using a series of deductions to show that the conclusion must be true, is called a direct proof. In general, if you're asked to prove a statement directly, what you're asked to do is assume the hypothesis is true, use a series of deductions to show that the conclusion must be true. True hypothesis, true conclusion, the overall conditional statement must be true. So, MIU is an axiomatic system which is designed to acquaint kids, acquaint students with this, this direct proof, the method of direct proof. In general, an axiomatic system is any system that, it's a system that consists of three things, undefined terms, definitions or items defined in terms of the undefined terms, and postulates. A postulate and an axiom are two words, they're, they're one and the same. An axiom or a postulate is a set of statements that we're going to assume are true about the undefined terms and the definitions. They don't need to be proven to be true, they're just things we're going to assume are true. Now you may recognize this in another form from your high school days. Euclidean geometry is an axiomatic system. It consists of three undefined terms, point, line, and plane. Then we create, or Euclid created, definitions. He defined other things in terms of the undefined terms. So for example, a line segment. A line segment is a set of all points between two points. Euclid then started with postulates. In Euclidean geometry, there are five initial postulates. One of the postulates is between any two points, there is exactly one line. So, using the undefined terms, the definitions, and postulates, Euclid or Euclidean geometry seeks to say what else can we show is true. MIU is a simplified version of Euclid's system. There are three undefined terms, M, I, and U. There's only one definition, and that's X. X is any string of I's and U's. So for example, the letter I is just a string. It could be a single letter. I, U is another string, okay? I, I, U is another string. So X is any combination of I's and U's that follow the M. 
Then MIU consists of four postulates. And those postulates are, if a string of letters ends in an I, then you may add a U to the end. Postulate two says if you have M X, remember X is a string, so if you have M something, then you may add that X to the end. You can double what comes after the M, in other words. Postulate two sometimes leads to some confusion. So let me give you an example. If you know that M I U U is true, X is the set of the string, the set of letters that comes after the M. So in this case, this is my X. So if you know that M I U U is true, then we can say M I U U, which is our X, I U U, which is another X. So if M I U U is true, then M I U U I U U is also true by postulate two. Postulate three says if if um, three I's occur in a row, you may substitute a, substitute a U in their place. And postulate four says that if U U occurs anywhere in the string, then you may delete them. So let's use this M the MI axiomatic, MIU axiomatic system to prove a statement. The statement we're going to we're going to try to prove in this case is if MI is true then MUIU is true. And we're going to prove that directly. Remember proving it directly means we're going to assume the hypothesis is true, assume MI is true, and through a series of deductions with the reasons for those deductions we're going to hopefully wind up with saying that M U I U is true. So in a proof, a direct proof, we're going to assume the hypothesis. So our first statement is M I. The hypothesis is true. The reason for that is that's given to us. In other words, we're assuming it to be true. Now we know that M I is true, so what else can we say? Well, we have postulates. Okay, our postulates, we could let's look at which ones apply. Postulate one says if the string ends in I, well, we have MI, so you may add a U to the end. So we could say MIU. Postulate two says if you have MX, M anything, then you may essentially double what comes after the X. So if we have MI, we could say MI, I. We could double what comes after the M. Postulate 3 does not apply because we don't have three I's in a row. Postulate 4 does not apply because we don't have U, U in our string. I think I'm going to apply postulate 2. So I'm going to say, since I know M, I is true, I can say M, I, I is true. And that is by postulate 2. Note for the proof, what you've got to do is you have to give, oh, sorry, my M disappeared. There you go you have to give the statement and the reason for that statement. Again, a proof is trying to say here's, here's, here's what's true and this is why it's true. Now, let's look at what we can say is true at this point. We know MII is true, so again, which postulates apply? Postulate 1 could apply. We could add a U to the end of that. Postulate 2, postulate two can always apply to any string. So we could say we know that MII is true, so we could say MII I, I is true. Postulate 3 does not apply again. Postulate 4 does not apply. I think I'll apply postulate 2 again. So I'll say that M I I, which is our string, I I is true. And that is postulate 2 again. Now, let's see what applies. We know M I I, I I is true. Okay, the string ends in I, so we could add a U to the end by postulate one. Uh, postulate two says we could double, essentially double what comes after the M. So if we know that M I I I I is true, we could say we could say that M I I I I I I I I is also true. In other words, we could get eight I's at the end of our M if that helped. Postulate three could also apply in this case. We have three I's in a row. Notice we have three I's. Uh, we've got the M, I, I, I. So those three I's are the last three I's. Either one, it would work. Postulate four still does not apply in this case. 
I think I'm going to apply postulate 1. So to M I I I I, I'm going to say M I I I I U. Since our string ended in an I, I can add a U, and that is by postulate 1. Okay. Now let's see what applies. We know that M I I I I U is true. So we can we could not apply postulate one since we don't have an I at the end. We could apply postulate two, that would give us again a very long expression. I think that's don't think that's getting us towards objective. Or we could apply postulate three. Again, still postulate four still does not apply. We don't have two U's anywhere in the string. I think I'm going to apply postulate 3, and I'm going to apply it to these three i's right there. Postulate 3 says when we see three i's in a row, we could substitute a u in their place. So if we have m, i, 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 u, we could say by postulate 3, m, u, i, u. And that is by postulate 3. So let's take a look at what we've done. We've shown that if mi is true, then mii is true, then mii is true, then miiiu is true, then muiu is true. So if the hypothesis is true, then the conclusion must be true. That says that our conditional statement, if mi, then muiu, must be true.